uh, she knew that this is a time when most Japanese immigrants were agricultural laborers, domestic workers, and other kinds of laborers. His grandfather, Jitsuji Aoki, opened a small business manufacturing Chinese-style noodles. He placed ads in the Oakland Tribune marketing his trademark chop suey brand noodles, registered with the U.S. Patent Office as providing a quick convenience of processed foods and appealing to modernity and nutrition. Why waste your time rolling out noodles when by asking for chop suey brand, you could obtain the very highest quality, all ready for use, rich in flavor and nutrients, easily prepared and adaptable to many combinations. Cooks in five minutes, the wise housewife keeps half a dozen packages of them on her pantry shelves. The Oakland Tribune food section regularly featured American-style recipes using chopped suey noodles. The business apparently did well, growing from noodles made by hand, to establishing a fully equipped factory, adding sales, people, and an automobile, and by 1930, manufacturing more than a ton of noodles daily and distributing them from coast to coast. So here we get a glimpse of a very unusual Japanese immigrant who not only had the financial means to open a manufacturing business, but he also promoted ideas of uh, more common to the post-World War II period. Right? He engaged in pan-Asian practices and assimilationist practices, making Chinese-style noodles and advertising to a mainstream American clientele at a time when the vast majority of Japanese um, business owners <coughs> Uh, cater to Japanese American customers. Richard's father and uncles were also on the Aoki path to success through assimilation and service, especially through leadership of the Japanese American 10th Street Methodist Church, the Boy Scouts, and the ROTC. And this is a picture of Richard's father, dated 1931. He was in high school in the ROTC. A second type of scholarly intervention that I made was focusing on interpreting Aoki's views and memories. Richard viewed his immediate family as misfits in multiple ways. His parents separated inside the concentration camps in Topaz, Utah, and if that wasn't unusual enough, Richard and his younger brother David went to, his mother moved out of the bear, and they lived with their father inside Topaz, as well as when they returned to the Aoki family home in West Oakland. Here's a picture that shows, kind of documents some of the, uh, kind of, like, I think, graphically shows some of these changes. So on the left, you see Richard and David with their mom and her father. And this is dated December of 44. Half a year after this picture was taken, um, this grandfather returned to Berkeley and within a week died of a heart attack. Um, and then this other picture is of Richard and David. Richard's on the right with David on the left with their father in front of the Aoki family home, and this is in the early post-war period. Richard's father represented a complex masculinity. He was involved, and he was an involved and caring father um, who single-parented his sons, as well as homeschooled them in a period before homeschooling was even heard of. Um, but Richard's father also provided increasingly erratic and an unstable family life. Richard recounted, there wasn't a regular routine because my father's schedule. Some days he was there and sometimes he wasn't. And when he wasn't there, Shozo Aoki apparently was engaged in extra legal activities involving narcotics, several robberies, and even a shooting. Richard originates his father's descent into lawlessness and divergence from the Aoki family's pathway to success in his World War II incarceration. And though Richard saw his own family as outcasts in the otherwise noble Aoki extended family, I discussed how based on my interviews, um, letters that I obtained between siblings in the 1940s, and newspaper articles, this good-bad binary in the Aoki family was constantly being disrupted. So one of the things that I found looking through the Open Tribune was a month apart in 1954, two stories. One was on Shozo Aoki, and one was on his older brother, Shigeo Aoki. The one on Shozo Aoki is this one, dated October 1954. It says, woman shot, husband held. It really, he really wasn't, it, there's no indication that they were married. She probably was his girlfriend. My understanding is she was an African-American woman. They seem to be living together. It says, the warehouse. They're living at a warehouse on 1255 26th Street. 
This was one of the warehouses that the Aoki grandfather had on 26th and Union. This was his, his former noodle factory. And Chozo was living there, and it seems like he probably shot his girlfriend. So you get some sense of problems, right? A month earlier in the pages of the Oakland Tribune, I find a series of articles looking at what was called Citizens Day. It was a special um, citizenship day that took place two years after Japanese American immigrants were granted naturalized citizenship through the 1952 McCarran-Walter Act. And this event was presided over by no less than William F. Nolan, the U.S. Senate Majority Leader, the longtime Republican Party leader, and the son and editor of the publisher of the Oakland Tribune. And Shigeo's speech reveals his vision of patriotism. He says, we are U.S. citizens because to us, America stands for freedom, democracy, and for love of fellow man. I believe that here in this wonderful country is the best opportunity in the world to accomplish these dreams. Still, dreams and nightmares are not as they appear. I discovered that Shigeo Aoki, the ostensibly good son, felt alienated from his father. Shigeo was born in Japan in 1902, shortly after his father left for the United States. Shigeo immigrated with his mother and older sisters five years later in 1907. So Shigeo was five years old before he met his father. And he said that throughout his life he felt emotionally estranged from his father, and he always envied the relationship that his dad had with Shozo and another U.S.-born son. During my research, I also discovered that a great uncle of Richard's made an audacious move that generated a nationwide scandalous stir and created hardships on the family. This is his great uncle, Bunjiro Aoki, his grandfather's younger brother, and that's his wife. Um, in 1909, Gunjiro Aoki dared to defy California anti miscegenation law by marrying Helen Emery, uh, Helen Gladys Emery. At the time, he was working as a servant in the Emery household, and Helen's father was no less than the Archdeacon of the Episcopal Church of San Francisco. The union made front page headline news in the Oakland Tribune, San Francisco Chronicle, New York Times, all negative. Helen and her mother departed to Seattle, where interracial marriages were legal to, in quote, the beating of tin cans and the throwing of rice, rocks, and flowers. The mayor of Tacoma warned all clergy against marrying them and refused their stay in his city. Helen lost her citizenship under the Cable Act when she married an alien ineligible for citizenship. Helen's parents split up, and Helen herself filed for divorce all in the first year of their marriage. Um, in the end, Helen and Gunjiro stayed together and raised five children. I have said, <laughs> yeah. if Richard had known about his uncle Gunjiro, once a social pari pariah turned family hero, I wonder if it would have lessened his sense of isolation and his, um, and his you know, based partially on his perception of his extended family's scorn of his father's outlaw activities and his own radicalism. I sense that throughout his life, Richard saw his own family as outcasts from the otherwise well-to-do Aoki family. But as I researched more, I discovered these good, bad binaries are not always what they seem, but are constantly shifting. If Richard had the opportunity to speak regularly with his family, as he began to do later in life, I suspect he might have developed a different, more nuanced, less polarizing view of his own deviant family in relation to the noble Aokis, one as complicated as the, uh, as the marriage of Gujo and Helen Aoki. Um, what I'd like to do now is...